Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this particular video, we will be looking at some key financial functions, which are the NXPV, the IRR, and the XIRR functions in Microsoft Excel. In our previous video, we had looked at the NPV function, the PV and the FV functions. If you have not seen that video and you don't know what these functions are used for, the link to that video is in the description box. I would strongly advise that you watch that video so that you can understand the NPV function at least because the XNPV function is a continuation from the NPV function that was looked at very deeply in a previous video. In this video, we are going to learn the NXPV function. We are going to see the IRR function. We will see the XIRR function and we will see how to use the, N the goal seek feature to find the NPV in Excel. Are you new to my YouTube channel? Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. For returning subscribers, thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel and let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. So for the NXPV function, it is a financial function basically that tells you if a project will be profitable or not profitable. So let's go right into an example. In the previous video, we had seen the NPV function and we will just do a quick recap in this video so equal to npv how to find the npv of cash flows equal to the rate of the investment and you select all the values of the cash flows close the bracket and you put plus the undiscounted investment which is of course going to be in negative so i hit the enter button on my keyboard and this is the output that i have let us also apply the NXPV function to these set of cash flows that we have to see the results that we will have at the end of the calculation. So you put NXPV, open the bracket, you select the rate, you put the comma separator. We can see that the next argument in the syntax is asking for the value. And in this case, you select all the values, including the outflow. You put the comma separator and you select the dates where you will have the, the cash flows. You close the bracket and I press the enter button on my keyboard. This is what I have. We can see a slight difference in the NPV and the NXPV functions. Someone would ask, what then is the use of the NXPV function? So in reality, we know that the cash flows do not come in at specific intervals because this is one of the limitations of the NPV function. It assumes that your cash flows will come in at a specific interval. So like you can see in this example, all the cash flows are coming in by the end of the year. In reality, this is not always the case. And this takes us to the next example where we have staggered dates with respect to how we receive the cash flows. And if we use the NPV function for this particular example, we are going to get a different amount when we use the, when we compare it to the output that comes from the NXPV function. So I will just do this example for us to see. Press the equal to sign and you type NPV, you open the bracket, you select the rate, which is this. I put the comma separator and I select the entire values of cash flows minus the outflow. I select the values of the entire inflows. I close the bracket and I add the outflow, which was the one at year zero, which is the investment. And I press the enter button on my keyboard. This is what I have which is the same as the NPV that was calculated, assuming that all the inflows or the cash flows are coming at a specific date. The dates are not staggered. But to get the real value 
for this investment because at the end of the day we want to use these figures to define our investment decisions and as much as possible the figures need to be accurate because we would depend on the results to make a decision in this particular example where you have the cash flows coming in at different dates we have to use the nxpv function to get a more accurate um, result so that we can make our profitability decisions so i select the rate i put the comma separator i select the entire values i put the comma separator and i select the dates of the cash flows and i close the bracket i press the enter button on my keyboard and this is the output that i have i will just put the comma so that this shows up really nicely we can see a significant difference between the NXPV output and the NPV output. And the result is different because of the staggered dates that we are getting the cash flows. One of the things that we must know is that your NPV function is going to give you a more accurate result when there is no missing cash flow in your array of data. So let us assume that for this particular date here, we have nothing, not even zero. Let us try and do the NPV function to see what happens. So I open the bracket. I select the rate as required. I put the comma separator and select the entire values. I close the bracket and I add the initial outflow at the which is the investment. And here that I can see that I have a negative NPV. Let us put a zero here and see what happens. We can see how this has changed very significantly. So when you have missing cash flows, a missing cash flow in your array of selection, you're most likely going to have a very wrong NPV. So this is something that you need to take note of. Now, what happens to the NXPV function when you have a missing cash flow? Let us see what happens. So here, NXPV equal to NXPV. I open the bracket. I select the rate. I put the comma separator. I select the entire values of cash flows. I use the comma separator and I select the entire dates and I close the bracket. Here we have a num error because of this missing cash flow. So if I want to resolve this, let us assume that for this particular period of time, there was no cash flow at all. For Excel to give you the accurate answer, you should put a zero in this place so that you can have your calculation done accurately for you. Now, if we want to use the NPV decision criteria that we had talked about earlier, we will have to reject this particular um, investment because the NXPV at the end of the, the, the period is negative. And we remember that the decision criteria says if your NPV is greater than zero, then you should accept the investment. If your M NPV is less than zero, then you should reject the investment. The next important financial function that we are going to look at is the IRR. The IRR means the internal rate of return, and it is a financial metric that tells you if an investment is profitable or not. It is otherwise sometimes called the economic rate of return. If you have watched up to this point in this video and you are yet to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button that you can see on your screen and please give me a thumbs up for this video. When you like this video, the YouTube algorithm will pull up this video when other people search for similar contents concerning XNPV, IRR, or XIRR. Thank you so much. Also share this video with your friends and your colleagues. So the IRR is the discount rate that makes the NPV of all cash flows zero. The name is called internal because it does not consider external factors such as inflation, cost of capital, and other external financial risks in its computation. How do you determine after calculating your IRR? How do you use the IRR to make a decision about your project. So if your IRR is greater than the cost of capital, you should consider taking up the project. 
if your IRR is less than the cost of capital, not zero in this case, but if it is less than the cost of capital, do not consider the project. And of course, like we know, the cost of capital is sometimes referred to as the interest rate, how much you get the capital that you want to invest in your business. If you're getting a loan from a bank, the cost of capital is the interest rate that the bank gives you for that loan. Let us see how we can use the IRR in Microsoft Excel with examples. Here we are trying to determine the IRR. So to get the IRR, all you need to do is put the equal to sign and type IRR and you open the bracket. You have two arguments in the syntax. The first one is the values. The next one is the guess. Now the second argument, like you can see, is optional. So we are going to go with the first argument only, which is mandatory. So you just select the entire values and you close the bracket. And this is how to determine the IRR of cash flows for your business. There are certain conditions that you must note if you want to use the IRR. The first one is that the cash flows must have at least one negative outflow and at least one positive inflow. The second condition is that the values must be listed in chronological order. Chronological meaning that the order that the cash flows come in. So you can see here, the first one is 2015 and you have here 2016 the next 2017 is the next so it is arranged in chronological order this has to be considered these two factors is very compulsory for you to get an accurate IRR in your calculation in the example we just saw on IRR one of the things that stood out is the fact that we assumed that all the cash flows are coming in at the same time which is at the end of the year in reality in real life we know that this is not always the case, most times your cash flows don't come in at the same time. And the time periods between the cash flows coming in are also not equal. So in this case, what happens? Because if the if all the payments do not happen at the same time and the time periods between the payments are unequal, your IRR is going to give you a wrong value. This is where the XIRR function in Microsoft Excel comes in because this function corrects this limitation on the IRR function. Let us see how this works. So the XIRR function overcomes the limitation of unequal timing of the cash flows and unequal time periods the duration between the time periods of receiving the cash flows. So here, the investment was done on the 31st of December 2015. The first cash flow is coming in on 30th of April 2016. The next cash flow is coming in on the 17th of July 2017. The difference between this, the first inflow and the investment, it's like four months. And then the difference between the first inflow and the second one is more than 12 months. So... If you use the IRR function for this example, you're most likely going to get a wrong internal rate of return. So the best function to use is the XIRR function. And how do you use it? You just put the equal to sign and you type XIRR, you open the bracket. The first argument is asking for the values. You select the entire values of cash flows, including the investment. You put the comma separator and the next argument is asking for the dates which is the time period for the cash flows. And of course, the third argument is optional, so we are going to ignore that. And you press the enter button on your keyboard, and this is what I have. 16% is the rate of return for this investment, considering that all the cash flows do not come in at the same time and the time periods between the cash flows are uneven. This next example is if you're sent a file in your workplace and you already have an IRR right here and you're asked to determine if the IRR is correct. Because like you can see in this example, the IRR was just a number, it's not a formula. So we can determine the IRR using the goal seek function. I had done a video in the past, very comprehensive about goal seek. 
the goal seek feature in Microsoft Excel is very useful for everyone to know because sometimes you're faced with a situation where you need to determine what a specific value which should be when you change one variable. And the challenge you might have is you may not know by how much that variable should change. So the goal seek function helps you to resolve this within seconds. And also just to mention that the IRR, the function, performs 20 iterations to at arrive at a rate. And the XIRR function performs 100 iterations to arrive at a rate. For more accuracy, you can actually force Excel to do over 32,000 iterations by using the Goal Seek. So the Goal Seek feature does about 32,000 iterations to come up with an accurate figure at the end of the day. So in this example, we will use the Goal Seek feature to find the percentage that will make the NPV zero because this is what the IRR is. The IRR is the rate that makes the NPV equal to zero. Now let us see if this IRR is equal is correct in the first place. So you use the equal to sign and you type NPV, you open the bracket, the rate in this case should be the IRR rate and we will select the entire values of inflows, close the brackets and do plus the outflow. Press the enter button on my keyboard. We can see that this IRR is wrong. The reason is that the NPV is not zero. Remember, the internal rate of return is the rate that makes the NPV zero. So how do we determine what the internal rate of return should be that will make the NPV zero? We can use Goal Seek to find this. The Goal Seek feature is in the data tab and you can find it in the forecast group, what if analysis, you click on the drop down and you select Goal Seek. Now, before you select the Goal Seek feature, you need to select first the cell that you want to change. In this case, the cell, the cell we want to change is the NPV, which I already had selected. And I want to change it to the value zero because the NPV has to be zero. The IRR is the rate that makes the NPV zero. And I want to change the internal rate of return. So I have selected the rate that I want to change and I'm going to click OK. This iteration has been done and I'm going to click OK because I can see that Excel has found a solution. So the internal rate of return that will make the NPV zero is 13%. Of course, you even have some things after it. So 13 point something, something percent. And if we double check this with the initial calculation we had done using the internal rate of return function, we can see that we have the same value. So I'll go back to the home tab and increase the percentages like this. Increase the decimal places instead like this. If we compare these two, we can see that it is the same. So this is how to use the goal seek function to determine what the IRR should be that will make the NPV equal to zero. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this video, we have seen how to use the NXPV function. We have looked at the IRR function and we have looked at the XIRR function and we have seen how to find the NPV with the goal seek. Let us cast our minds back. For people who do businesses, of course, when a business makes profit, you want to reinvest that profit into the business. The internal rate of return function assumes that all the cash flows generated from the project are reinvested into the business at the rate that is equal to the internal rate of return itself. And, in, and this is not realistic. Also, a project might have positive and negative cash flows during the period. So think of a bis biscuit factory in the first two years the cash flows might be negative because customers are just getting used to a new biscuit in the area if you use the irr function to calculate the internal rate of return that will make the npv zero for this scenario you're going to not have an accurate result there is a function in excel that helps to take care of these two peculiarities that I have mentioned. In the next video, we would look at what this function is and we will also carry out examples using this function. See you in the next video. Give me a thumbs up. Drop your comments in the comment section what you think about these financial functions.